What's up guys, today we have Robert on the show. He's a newly awarded black belt and specializes in leg locks. To protect my legs, I'm trying to go shin on shin, which will make it hard for Robert to backstep into a leg entanglement, but Robert isn't letting me. He steps deep with his leg or steps away as I try. See how he steps deep again? Now I use a De La Hiva X guard to prevent the back step. Robert steps wide to counter which makes his lead leg lighter, making it possible for me to stand up with the leg for the single. Robert tries to invert into a leg entanglement. I stay heavy with my hips and back step to get my legs out of there. I manage to accidentally knee Robert in the face. Oops. When countering leg locks, you need to understand when to use pressure and when to bail. I bail and land in a position that I can use pressure to stifle his attacks. This is the side smash, having both knees pinned down like this. Look how I use my right foot to stop Robert's leg from holding onto mine as I backstep. Instead of accepting the pass, Robert turtles, but I take my seatbelt grip. He tries to hide his back on the mat, but I beat him positionally by getting there first. Robert does a great job of getting his back off the center line, which is a crucial step in most back escapes. I triangle my legs to keep him from escaping and try to pull his body up higher using his head. I make a technical mistake by trying to trap his arms with my legs before improving my position on his back first. It's okay though, I just transition to mount and look how I take an underhook as I transition. I find the open elbow and use it to jack up his arm where he's vulnerable to attack. I use my head and my hand to help bring it up even higher. My right arm is already in the perfect position, it has a good bite, meaning there's no space between my bicep and my forearm. Robert gives me a tiny little tap, just a little guy, and it takes me a split second to realize. Make sure to like and subscribe, I super appreciate you doing that for me. Notice how Robert keeps stepping out of my shin on shin and stripping grips I have on his legs. Jiu Jitsu is a grip fight and Robert understands that very well. Watch how I use my butterfly hook to elevate Robert's leg. He can't come up on top without his foot on the ground. I use the concept of getting my hips higher to win the scramble. I'm back in the side smash and instead of backstepping, I find the space between Robert's elbow and knee for mount. Most escapes from mounts are side control involve you getting on your side. I could cross face Robert to put his back back on the mat, but instead go guillotine but give up on it in favor of the rolling back attack. That fails though and now I just gotta get my feet out of there. I can't let Robert curl into a ball. My underhook with my hand placed firmly on the mat will ensure that he can't. You're gonna see what happens when Robert can curl his body in. He pushes my weight off of him making my legs light. In slow motion you can see it's when he brings his knees to his chest that he has the most strength for attack. I had to bail so I wouldn't get leg locked. I try to control his legs so he can't stand up, but instead Robert attempts an Imanari roll. Right away I start smashing the legs. I lift my leg before Robert can establish a strong connection. It definitely helps that I was very sweaty. I had sparred Muay Thai for about 45 minutes before this roll. As you can see, I don't try and speed pass Robert in this roll, it's all pressure passing to negate the leg lock threat. Although sometime I should do a roll with Robert where we only go for leg locks on each other. I I think that'd be fun. Underhooks are king in nogi. You don't want to let people have them on you and you want to take them on them, unless you have counters or traps up your sleeve, which I do. I'm going to let Robert on his side, which he needs to do anyways to actually use the underhook. This is a trap and I'm waiting. Look how much space I'm giving him. I wait until he comes up a little more to make room for me to shoot my hand under his neck. I try to go darst, but Robert shoots his back flat onto the mat, which takes away the angle I need to lock it up. This is another technical mistake on my part. I should have had my weight a little lower, my chest closer to his knees. Robert capitalizes by entering into this outside heel hook, but I clear the knee line to escape. Robert brings my weight forward with all my weight above him, which makes my legs light. It's now easy for him to wrap his legs up around mine. Right away, I use my left shin to help pry my leg out before pulling it out from my belly down position. That was a close one. To get into the side smash position, notice how I use my body, not my arm to drive Robert's legs down to the side. My arms wouldn't be strong enough, but the weight of my body is. Then I just backstep to fully clear the legs. I'm sure you're just looking at Robert's face right now, but look at my toes. My toes are engaged on the mat, driving into Robert to maintain control. It's one of my 20 tips in my 20 tips video. Let me know if you've used any of those tips successfully since watching. It's easier to hit Americanas when the arm is jacked up like this, rather than the way it's traditionally taught of driving the arm down to the mat. 
To finish an Americana, focus more on sliding the hand back towards the hips rather than lifting the elbow. You still need to lift the elbow, but bringing the hand towards the hips really takes away the range of motion. It should be the focus of the combined movements. The Americana is often the first submission taught to beginners. The triangle is the first technique that I learned. My first class it was just me and three others. I had no idea what I was doing, but as soon as we started rolling, I loved it. Let me know what your first class was like. This is the exact same sequence as earlier, except this time I don't need Robert in the face. And now we land in butterfly guard, but it's really a smash butterfly guard. You don't want to be on your back in butterfly guard, you want to be on your butt. I have Robert controlled very well right now, but I need to figure out how to pass without letting Robert get onto his butt or move his legs freely. I place my hands on the hips so he can't get to his butt, and then I jump to a squat position to maintain control of his legs. And now we're back in the side smash. I hope you can take this technique away from the video and use it for yourself after seeing it so many times. Right away I'm threatening Robert's right arm, always trying to jack it up high, and now the only direction he can really go to defend is to his left, which I welcome. As soon as I see some space I shoot my shin up high. I hook his leg because my leg isn't over his head yet. The grip on his leg buys me time to get my leg over his head. Instead I end up using my shin to do the same job. The leg over the head just prevents people from turning into you and getting on top, but so does my shin in the situation. Situation. What matters is control. That's why I think it's silly when people say you can't cross your feet in an armbar. You can if it helps you control them and you shouldn't if it doesn't help or makes your control worse. It's situational. Everyone should have a good reverse delahiva. In my opinion, it's crucial. It's not an advanced guard, it's just grips you take with your hands and feet when your opponent is standing with one leg between yours. This saddle entry is a little advanced though. I underhook my right arm, which is a grip helpful for inverting. Then bring my right leg from in front to behind Rob. Robert. He really limits my ability to get my hips closer to his by putting his right arm in the way. Now he frames with his arm to clear the knee line. I still want to be on top though so I control the legs and get my hips higher than Robert's. And now we're back in the side smash. To counter, Robert is trying to pull my leg to his head, which is a good strategy. If I were him, I'd probably try to off balance me to the left and hope there's enough space created to get my top leg free. What would you do from here? He's starting to accomplish what he wants, but my strong cross face stops him. Now I sprawl and back step. I haven't cleared his legs enough though, and he uses his hook to elevate me. I jump on his neck as I see there's space. But as I get to mount, I feel the grip isn't deep enough, so I just bail on it. I could just go ham and maybe get the tap, but you should always prioritize perfect finishing position. Any choke I do, I don't squeeze at all until I get in the perfect finishing position, and if I can't, I let go. You should do the same and spare people's necks and throats. I backstep from Robert's half guard as I sense a momentary lack of control of my leg. I pin his arm and try to get mount, but instead settle for knee on belly. Because Robert is on his side, there's back exposure, which I take advantage of by circling around and shooting my knee between his elbow and knee. My left foot controls his leg so I can circle my leg around and secure the truck position. It'd be really nice to cap this off with a twister, but not today. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump. Also a big thank you to Robert for being on the show.